Hi folks, this is Glenn, your travel photography guru. We're going to have some fun today creating an illustration in Photoshop that explores color theory. So let's get cracking. So with Photoshop open, we're going to go File, New. We're going to give this uh, document uh, a name. So we'll call it Color Theory Illustration. And what we want here is to have uh, the width for 1024 pixels, the height at 768 pixels. The resolution, as uh, you know, we're working with pixels, so we're, we're designing this for, for the web, which would include websites, blog sites, email, and even includes digital projection. Now the default uh, is 72 pixels per inch, but we're going to go to 135 just to try to bring some extra clarity to the text. Text is uh, likely to suffer when it's compressed uh, to be placed onto the web, so having that little bit of extra resolution may help. Uh, for that reason, I'm also working in 16-bit rather than the default 8-bit. The color profile is generally going to be Adobe RGB. That's the color space that most photographers work in, and that's why I've left it there. Personally, I tend to work in a larger color space, uh, Pro Photo RGB, and then output from there. Uh, but again, most photographers work in Adobe RGB, so we'll leave it at that. And the idea is once you've finished your file and you're ready to save a version of it specifically for the web, you would then output that version, like a save as, in the sRGB color profile, because that's a smaller color space, but that is the color space of the web. Hopefully that makes some sense. Now for background contents, if we click here, we've only got a couple options. Now this varies a bit depending on which version of uh, Photoshop you're running. I'm running Adobe Photoshop CC or Creative Cloud 2014. So I want to make it black. Well, I don't have black as an option. But what I can do is just um, click on it and then it takes me to the color picker and I could choose black down here. Now you know either the bottom right or the bottom left of this large color box. You know that it's actually black because you've got red, green and blue all at zero. If for instance red and green were zero and, 10, uh, and blue was 10, that would mean you've got 10 units uh, more blue in the image, which means your blacks will have a bluish tinge to them. So the idea is they're all zeroed out and you have a jet black without any color bias. So we can go OK. Now that actually just updated this little black square. The other way to do it uh, with this version of the program is just to click on the square itself and choose the particular color you're after. See, it, it's now going to be red. Is it pure red? No. In fact, 100% red um, or 100% for any of these three colors is actually defined as 255. So we're not quite there. So we can go into this larger color box and click and drag our mouse right up. So it's actually going over the far right corner. And that means it's actually been, it's pushed the circle as far into that corner as you can go. And down the bottom we have red at 255, green at zero and blue is zero. So that is pure red. So another way to do it. But we want this to be black. So I'm going to click on there again and uh, go right down to the bottom left or bottom right corner. Make sure red, green and blue are all zero. Go OK. Now if you've got an older version of the software, you won't have this little square. So what can you do? Well, you, before you open up the document, before you create the new document, you go over here to the um, bottom left of the toolbar and at the moment black is the foreground color. You need to have it as the background color. So you would, for instance, click this little double arrow, which will reverse those and place the black square behind the white square. So in that case, the black would be the background color. And then in here, background contents, you select background color. So that's a workaround that'll get you there. It can be frustrating, these sorts of things. Okay, so we're happy with what we've got. We go OK. And I'm going to hit Command 0, not O, but the number 0. And of course, that's Control 0 on a PC. 
So that's filling out more of my screen real estate. Now we go over to our background layer, which of course is filled with black, and we're going to duplicate that three times. So we could go layer, duplicate layer, do that three times. We could go to the layer itself, click and drag it into the, let's see, down here, next to the trash can. This icon just to the left of the trash can is called create a new layer, but in this case it would duplicate the layer. You see background copy. I'm going to go Command-Z to undo that. We could right-click on the layer itself and go Duplicate Layer. Or the option I prefer is use Keyboard Shortcut. In this case, it's Command-J or Control-J on a PC. So 1, Command-J again, 2, Command-J again, 3. We have three duplicate layers. Each of them are black. So I'm going to switch the eye icon off in each case. So there's our background layer. If I get rid of that, we have the second one is black. Now click on the third one, that's black. Click on the fourth one, they're all filled with black. Okay, so now what we need to do is to name each of these layers. So let's double click on the top one, make sure it's selected. You can see the blue color there, tells us it's active or selected. Double click and I'm gonna type in RED, enter. So there's red. Click on the layer below it, that's now selected and Double click on the words this time and call that green, enter or return, and then click on the final layer here called layer one. Double click on the word and type in blue. You knew that was coming, didn't you? And go enter return. So we've got red, green, and blue all ready to go. So what are we going to put inside this red layer? Well, it'd be a fair guess to say the color red. So let's go over to our toolbar, and if we scan down the toolbar, I want to draw a circle. Now, there's a few ways of doing that, but none of them are immediately obvious to me because I don't see a circle tool. There are so many tools in Photoshop that in some cases they nestle one or more tools with another. So what that means is kind of like um, you've got a hand of cards and you're trying to hide them from the player next to you and you just sort of you know, squeeze them in so the one's on top of the other. So actually the second option down, if we hover over it, is the rectangular marquee tool. If we click on it and hold our mouse down, there you go, the elliptical marquee tool and a couple others are nestled in the same place. So it's kind of like, I guess, um, you like chocolate? Well, okay, head over to the chocolate aisle and you've got a few options there. You like cookies? Pop down to uh, the biscuit aisle and um, choose the cookie of your choice. So that's kind of what it is. They're just, it's a kind of filing system, I suppose. So up again to the rectangular marquee, and I'm going to um, hover and click on the elliptical marquee tool. And now you see that's come to the foreground, that's selected. So now we bring our mouse into our image area and we click and drag in a diagonal direction. I'm going to make the square about, I don't know, about that big. So, you know, if you were to rearrange things, maybe you'd fit about six of them in the overall space here. We're going to have two circles in the top and one uh, directly below. That may help you. So this is now called a selection. Um, they're kind of, the kind of slang term is marching ants, but it's a selection that's been made, and we want to fill it with the color red because we're on the red layer. So we go edit fill and now we have to choose a color so the fill layer or sorry so we want to fill it with red so the contents what color do we want click on the word color we have black as an option well that's not going to be much use to us because it's already black the contents um, inside that circle gray 50% gray which means it would be neither a dark nor a light gray it's actually a mid gray or white, but we want color. So let's click on the word color here, and up comes our color picker. So how do we get red? Because you can see at the moment, um, blue, simply because that was the last color I worked on, blue is what's available to me in this large um, color square. So you can do one of two things. This more narrow um, strip of color, you can click on one of these uh, arrows and move up all the way, 
or move down all the way to get to red. Alternatively, with your mouse, just go inside this thin strip of color and click. And it moves the arrows up there. And now you see the large square has adapted to show us reds. Now I want pure red. So look again, 255 for red. Green, however, there's a bluish car, so it's going to be a very slight magenta red. So we need to make sure it's pure red, 255 for red, and zero for the other two colors. So how do we achieve that? Well, there's a tiny little circle. I'll just move it out a bit. And as that moves around, you'll notice these three colors. Don't worry about all the other stuff. We'll just concern ourselves with this. These, This is easier. Red, green, and blue. Um, so as I move that little circle around, those numbers adjust. So if you push it right up to the top corner and kind of move your mouse even further, so that means you've pushed that little circle as far as it can possibly go, and you would normally get 255 red, 0 green, 0 blue. The reason we haven't is that this narrow, uh, this narrow bar of color has not been pushed right up to the very top. So if I move that up, now I've got 0 and 0. The other way to do it, I'll just move it back a bit, would simply be to put your mouse in here, highlight that number, and type in 0. Enter. So that's now pure red. But it hasn't applied it yet. So we actually have to um, go OK. And there it is. It's filled that circle with the color red. Now here's a trap. Before we move on to the next color, which will be green, we need to deselect this circle. So it's a selection at the moment, but we need to, we want to work on a different part of the um, the image. So we're going to go select, deselect. The the shortcut is Command D, which is, of course is Control D on a PC. So I'll do that Command D. If we want to bring it back again, we could go select, reselect, and the shortcut is Shift Command D which would be shift Control d on a PC. So let's try that. Shift-Command-D. It's selected to deselect it. Command-D, of course, Control d on a PC. Done. Now let's go to our green layer. Make sure you've clicked on it. Make sure it's highlighted in that blue-gray color. Um, you've got your uh, elliptical marquee selected. So just click and drag diagonally to make a circle of a similar size. You know, try to get it as close as you can to the first one. Now we need to fill it with color. So what do we do? We go edit, just like last time, fill. And we've, uh, we just have to, it's a bit weird this, we have to click on the word color to actually bring up the color picker. I find that very strange. Um, and then how do we get to green? It's not available to us in the big box here. So just move your mouse down, for instance, uh, on the thin slice of colors and click in there. And you could, you know, move up and down to see how the arrows are moving with me until you get something that's uh, green. And make sure your mouse is in the top right corner. And you'll be close to getting 0, 255 for green, 0 for blue. Again, if you don't, Highlight the offending color and type in zero. And then we go OK up the top here. So we're ready to go with the color green, but we still have to place it into the circle. So what do we do? We click OK to fill this circle, this selection with the color green. Done. Believe it or not, if you look at it, you think, Glenn, you fool. <laughs> And you wouldn't be the first person to think that. But let's see what's going on. We'll go over to our um, uh, layers panel where the individual layers are. Do you notice how the thumbnail has been updated? The green one's green. Yet we can't see that color in the actual document. We can only see it in the layers panel. And why is that? Well, it's because it's being that green circle is being blocked by the red layer on top. It's kind of like looking down from above on your open sandwich with the background being the bread at the bottom. You can see the lettuce on top, but you can't see, for instance, the 
corned beef below. But we want to taste the two, don't we? We want them to um, intermingle in our mouth. So what do we do there? Well, we go to our top layer red and we go, we change the blend mode. The default's always normal. Click and go screen. And that allows us to see through to, the, to what's below. So we see the layer we're on, but we also see through to the layer below. So now, with our open sandwich analogy, we can taste both the lettuce and the yummy corned beef underneath. That's kind of fun. And again, we need to make sure we deselect. This is a trap. So um, select, deselect. Those marching ants need to disappear. And we'll go to the blue layer, click on that, make sure it's selected. Uh, our elliptical mark key is still selected. So we just draw our third and final circle of a similar size. Don't worry about the placement of these circles. We're going to fix that in a minute. And you already know what to do, don't you? Edit, fill. We want to fill it with color. We want to make the contents of that circle color. So we click on the word color and it opens up the dialog box. Now click inside this thin strip of colors to get blue and then make sure your little circle, which you sometimes have to search for, is right up in the top corner. And we almost got it, but green's the offending one this time. So highlight green, type in zero. Blue is 255, which means 100% actually in Photoshop speak. And um, red and green are both zeros. So we go, uh, and it's changing the color from green, like it's kind of like the color on the pasteboard, if you like, from the last time was green, and now it's going to change to pure blue. Click OK. And then we've got a selection. We're going to fill that selection with the color that we chose. So let's go OK. And yes, it's happened again. We can't see it on our document, but it's there in our layers panel. So what do we do? Well, remember when we're on the red layer, we had to change the blend mode of that layer to screen so we could see the, what, was un, what was directly underneath. Now that means the layer, the single layer directly below, which is green. So now we have to do the same thing. We click on the green layer and we change the blend mode to screen again to see what is on the layer directly below that, the blue layer. So there we go red, green, and blue. And they're all on their own layer. So here's the blue one. Well, here's the black one. I'm going to go Command D, Control D, because this will really trap you up if you don't do this, because um, you'll think you'll be changing something on one layer, but you won't be because you've still selected another color or another circle or another layer. So Command D, Control D. So here's our black background unchanged. Here's our blue layer. Click on the one above that, there's the green, click again, there's red. So um, they're all there. Okay, let's go to the red layer and just place it a little bit better. I'm going to go up to the very top left of my toolbar, click on the Move tool. The keyboard shortcut is V for Victor. And now I can click um, on that red circle and move it around. Now this is interesting and we're going to explain what's happening here in just a minute. I'll now click on the green layer so you see it's selected and with that gray blue color and I can now click and move my green circle around and now I'll click on the blue layer it's selected go to the blue circle and move that around. Now do you notice this um, pink magenta line that's coming up, sometimes on the vertical, sometimes on the horizontal. That's just telling you um, if you've lined things up basically in the middle of the page, which, you know, can be useful. So let's let's talk about what we've got here. We've got um, the three primary colors in photography, red, green, and blue. So it's different to painting. That's the first thing. The second thing to notice is what happens when you mix two of those primaries together. And this, I think, is the fascinating part, because when you mix pure red, that's 255 red, zero green, zero blue. When you mix pure red with pure blue, you create the color called magenta. When you mix 
pure red with another primary, pure green, you make the color yellow. And finally, when you mix pure green with pure blue, you make the complementary color cyan. So if we saw this one in isolation, a lot of folks would call it blue, but actually it's the color cyan. And the sky often has quite a lot of cyan in it. So sometimes you're trying to adjust it by moving a blue slider and on a bit, you know, and that particular sky isn't cooperating. Well, that's because probably there's more cyan than blue in that particular sky. Okay, so we've got our three primaries, red, green, and blue. We have our three complementary colors, cyan, magenta, and yellow. When our three colors are mixed together, they make, in equal amounts, they make white. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? Now, one last thing on the relationship between these colors. If you want to make really vibrant colored images, it's advisable to work wherever possible with contrasting colors. Um, they're often referred to uh, by the term complementary because just like black and white keys on a keyboard, look how um, the, the blue and yellow are directly opposite each other. That means they are contrasting colors and they complement each other. So for instance, in my part of the world, spring, um, you know, yellow wattle looks fabulous against a, a blue sky. It really becomes more vibrant. They, they vibrate against each other, in fact, these opposite colors. And they add a greater sense of three dimensionality to your photograph, a greater sense of space and depth. Same thing happens in nature with uh, magenta and green. There are often magenta flowers that placed against, you know, green uh, foliage or green grass. So that's a very striking color combination, green and magenta. And the final one is red and cyan because they're opposite each other as well. And, you know, that might be, I don't know, a red wall against a cyan um, sky. So, you know, I know in China, you see, you see that if you get out of the polluted parts of the country. You often see red because it's such a dominant color there in their culture against a blue sky. It's very striking. So um, blue and yellow, magenta and green, and red and cyan, opposite colors, make for really dynamic images. Okay, so let's just do one last thing. I'm going to click on the background layer and let's give this a title. Let's call it, well, color theory, color theory, that'll do. So I'm now going to go over to my text tool, or, or rather my type tool on the left of the toolbar, and I'm going to click on it. And then as soon as I click inside the image, have a look at the, at the layers panel over here. As soon as I click my type tool inside the image, it creates a text layer automatically. And I'll type the words color theory. Now, I can't see anything, and let's try to work out why that is. Firstly, I'm going to click on the Move tool in the top left corner. Now, it's a bit of a trap, this, because if you actually hit the V, the, the keyboard shortcut for Move tool, you'll add the letter V to your text because you've got the Type tool going. So the keyboard shortcuts work, but not always that well with text. That's one to be, be wary of. So I can click and drag, but what, do I, what am I doing? I don't really know because I can't see my text. Yet over here on the type layer, we can see that I have actually typed the words color theory because that's actually named the layer itself. We can't see it. Why? There'd be a couple reasons. Go back to my type tool, click on it, and it may be that we'd chosen black as the color of text. It's not, it's red. So that's not the problem. You know, black against a black background would be a problem. It could be that the uh, the font was too small, but 30 uh, points isn't, you know, it's quite a good size. So what is it? Well, it's the blend mode because on top of the words color theory, we have um, a predominantly black image. That's the blue layer. So it's predominantly black. So what do we do? We click on the blue layer, and as we've done twice already, change the blend mode to screen. So the layer with the blue circle is allowing us now to see through to the layer directly below it, color theory. Well, there we go. We've done well, haven't we?
we started with a black image. There's our text, blue circle. I'm just clicking the eye icons that you can see are here on the right hand side to switch each layer on. There's the green circle. And when you mix blue and green together, you get the color cyan. Here's the red circle. When we mix pure red with pure blue, we get the color magenta. When um, the three colors mix together, you get the color white. It's fun, isn't it? So that's it. I hope you enjoyed that, folks. A bit of an introduction to color theory. And we got to work with colors. We got to work with um, a drawing tool, the elliptical marquee. We got to fill that um, circle, that we, each circle that we created with um, different colors. We got to work with text. We got to change the color of our background. All in all, I think we've just had too much fun. So with that in mind, let's uh, wrap it up. This is Glenn Guy, your travel photography guru, and I look forward to working with you again soon. Thanks and bye for now.